G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Now today I've got a video to address a question that I receive quite often um, via people on say LinkedIn or just in general, and that is, should I study BIM? Um, I know that obviously COVID has come and put a lot of people in furlough or unemployed, and there seems to be a general perception that the study of BIM will give you a leg up in your career. Now, not always the case. Um, I'm gonna run through at least what I think when I get this, this question brought to me, um, which is you know usually the same answer regardless of the person. So I'd like to thank everyone for actually the, the technically the request. Um, I, I get it at least once a week, someone will ask me exactly this question, almost worded the same way as well. Um, but I'll cover, you know, should you study BIM, obviously, first. I'll answer the question first and then explain after, um, rather than force you to sit through everything and then get your answer at the end. Um, I want to talk just about skills and certificates, because ultimately studying BIM is a little bit of both. Um, and also what other options are out there for you, um, as well as how it might fit into your overall career pathway. So first things first. Should you study BIM? Um, that is the question you've come here to hear the answer to. And my answer typically is probably not. It really depends on your context, both personally and professionally. There are very specific scenarios where studying BIM might be the right choice, depending where you are in your career. But typically most people that come to me asking this question are very, very new to the industry or haven't even entered the industry yet. Um, and that's usually a sign that they're not really ready to study something like this. So when should or shouldn't you study it? So these are sort of the reasons why I tell people they either should or shouldn't. Um, to be honest, I almost never find a scenario where someone should, because usually they don't meet some of these criteria. But I typically say at the very least, you should have a base qualification that you have actually applied in the real world with professional experience. And BIM is really something I think that should be studied as a specialization, not a generalization. So if you are just entering the industry, I don't think you'll get enough out of learning BIM through a study course, um, unless you really, really, really just wanna focus on BIM. But even then you have to ask yourself, what is a career with just BIM? It's not really anything, to be honest, because BIM is always complemented by architecture, engineering, project management, construction, um, it's all about process. It's not about just being technical. And you'll find that the BIM courses aren't actually that focused on being technical anyway. So if you don't have professional grounding of the context this course relates to, you probably really won't get much out of it and it might be a bit of a waste of your money and time ultimately. Um, so you shouldn't if you don't have any other qualifications in my opinion, especially if you're a graduate or as a lot of people from India that ask me this question call themselves uh, freshers. So if you're a fresher, not the right time. Um, and if, if you're just generalizing, um, not the right time either. So a degree in BIM, uh, you need to understand that it's not the same as a degree in architecture, engineering, project management, construction, quantity takeoff. Um, you, you can't replace these skills with a degree in BIM. So if you're looking to shortcut the fact that you don't have a bachelor's or a master's degree or a diploma, that would typically get you into one of these jobs. A degree in BIM will typically not do this for you. So don't expect this to be a shortcut. Uh, most degrees in BIM are shorter than these degrees and they focus on different things. Uh, the general thought that some people see is, oh, I could study BIM for one year or I have to pay five years to go and study architecture. Well, the, the bad news is that typically you will need to do those five years if you wanna become a fully fledged architect. Um, they won't trust you enough otherwise. Um, but I guess like ask yourself, what are your real career goals? What, what do you wanna do on a day-to-day -day basis? And why is BIM something that you wish to study? And will it be enough just to give you these base skills? Um, most of the time you'll probably find no. Um, as well as this, just remember that BIM itself doesn't always necessarily give you more money. So if you're doing it because you think it's gonna boost your salary or your earnings potential, um, you may be mistaken. Um, typically you will make more money in a principal slash director pathway if you are following this as an architect. Um, if you wanna be a BIM manager, you're gonna have to argue for that salary to get it, um, I'll be honest. As well as this, BIM is still sort of seen as like a nice to have um, when you're going for like an architecture or an engineering role. They're gonna be much more interested in what you know about the framework of the law and design and construction. Um, and BIM courses don't really focus on these things. 
So typically they're going to be much more interested in what you know about these things, unless you're going for a very dry BIM management role where you need to basically just write TIDPs or MIDPs all day, which is pretty rare. Skill and certificate is a really important thing to differentiate if you're looking to study anything like BIM. In my opinion, skills are always what matters. The certificate can be helpful to prove to someone that doesn't understand the technical background of what you know, uh, but skills will always be what really makes you stand out as an employee, especially if you have a referee to back up what you can do. As well as this, skills are typically something you've applied and developed in the real world, so they have developed on the basis of context. Whereas a certificate-based skill um, on paper, literally, uh, will usually mean that you've applied this skill in a simulated or an academic environment. And I'll be honest, having been through the university system in Australia, at least when I went through it, it was a little bit out of touch with reality. There were some things you got away with at uni that you never would use in the real world. Likewise, there were certain project scenarios that were just unrealistic. There wasn't enough focusing on bu uh, project budgeting. Uh, working to a limited brief. Um, typically, it was rare that we got a very specific brief. Usually, we almost wrote our own brief. Um, so there are some things that usually you just won't get out of studying for a certificate. Um, so do keep in mind that even if you study BIM, I think most people will expect you to have some sort of practical experience. And the easiest way to develop this in BIM is to work away at a role such as an architect or an engineer and then specialize into the role of BIM instead of just studying it and hoping that this will give you the opportunity to begin. So usually I suggest if you are looking to study BIM and you have a good reason to, um, typically you would have wanted to work for maybe at least like three to five years, I think is pretty necessary to really understand the AEC industry uh, from the perspective of whichever role you've taken on. Um, it could be longer than that. You, you might even want to you know, get into a BIM management role and that might be the trigger point where you might want to validate your knowledge or expand your knowledge through a degree. Um, don't get me wrong, degrees are great. They can really fast track your learning versus self-guided self learning. Having said that, I think that everyone should still be focusing on guiding their learning journey to some degree. There's a lot of great resources out there. I mean, sure, my channel's one of them. There's a lot of other ones too, though. Um, so keep in mind that if you're not guiding your own learning, you're sort of doing yourself a disservice anyway. Um, in terms of career pathway and study progression, I would say that, you know, somewhere between the coordinator to the management role seems to me the right time to study BIM, if any, um, just to reinforce your learning and expand it just that little bit more. But you may not need to. You might find that your day-to-day -day work gives you enough context and experience to understand these frameworks that these courses focus on. So what options are there? Well, I see them as really like two fields. You've got the, the informal and the formal recognition. And you've got like semi-formal recognition in between, but the formal degrees are typically either through a university or a learning institution such as a RICS or Ziggurat program, which are fairly widely recognized by the industry. Um, they are obviously more expensive. You can be expecting to pay anywhere between a thousand dollars to, you know, I don't, I don't know, like three thousand dollars a year, depending on the course. Uh, obviously, university probably being the most expensive option, um, and then Ricks and Ziggurat and those types of courses being a little bit cheaper, but a little bit more condensed as well. Um, you have a lot of micro credentials, such as BIM creds offered by Building Smart, um, and some software certifications like the Revit Professional Certified Exam. Um, but typically, I find that these aren't really a measure on your CV of uh, what you know about BIM. It's more about you proving to yourself what you know about BIM. So I really would only recommend you take these if you want to validate it to yourself or just give people that you're helping that little bit more confidence that you know what you're doing. Uh, but if you are gonna try and impress a management type, um, probably a formal degree would better be a better choice, if any. Uh, there are lots of informal learning avenues these days as well, Udemy, LinkedIn, course platforms, YouTube. Um, typically, this should be more about your self-development not about you uh, picking up skills you can put on a CV. I see a lot of people build their CV and they have almost an entire page of every course they've ever done on Udemy. Um, you, you may as well just delete this page. It's not gonna get you a job, unfortunately. Um, even if you passed a test and got 100%, um, there's no way that we can verify you know, how that test was measured. There's no institution that's probably verified the accuracy of the course. So typically you really shouldn't be focusing on sharing these for the point of waving a certificate in someone's face. <laughs> 
So my opinion on the major platforms like Ziggurat and Rix and all those, um, not really specifically talking about one in particular here, just in general, what I've seen is that there's some good things about them. Um, one thing is that they do give you a, a wide ex uh, exposure to all the standards out there. Most of them are quite up to date when it comes to focusing on things like the ISO standards or the British framework. Um, so you will get a little bit of rapid exposure to things you probably didn't know about. Um, they're probably also helpful if you are in the UK because obviously the UK is quite up to date um, with BIM, they're, they're probably leading the charge. So it will give you some fast tracking of things that you probably do need to know if you're involved in BIM. Um, and as well as this, I guess a lot of people will recognize these institutions and courses by name. If someone says I've done the RICS course, most BIM managers would know what you're talking about and might you know, think you're a little bit better for it. There's some bad things as well though. Um, I find that the courses typically don't have a good balance between technical and, um, and workflow based skills. Uh, some of these courses are way too obsessed with the mantra that BIM is all about process. And yes, sure, process is important, um, but you can't really do a lot of process without the tools that generate that process. So I find that sometimes there does need to be a little bit of software involved in the course, um, not teaching you how to technically use the software, but teaching you how to technically integrate the software into the processes. So if the course doesn't touch on this enough, I find that this can be a little bit of a weakness to how you learn BIM. Um, I think there are far too many BIM managers out there that don't know how the tools work anymore and they just do BIM on paper. They don't do BIM in practice. So you do need to be careful of the curriculum these courses may offer you. Likewise, if the courses are too technically focused, you're not really gonna get a true BIM management experience through the course if they don't focus at all on framework or regulation or how to manage a, a master information delivery plan, for example, or a BIM management plan as maybe we used to call them, um, then you're gonna, you're gonna obviously not get as much out of the reality of the course as well. Um, as well as this, companies just might not care <laughs> if you have the certification too. Don't expect them to be excited by it because a lot of people won't understand the value of these courses anyway. Um, but at least if you think it helps you, no reason not to do it. But ultimately, I just keep telling people experience really is the best teacher. Um, it is the it is what looks best on a CV. Um, if you've had five years working at a single company focusing on BIM, that's better than doing a half year course um, on a CV always. I would say even BIM managers would probably prefer to see that because it shows dedication, it shows loyalty, it shows perseverance. Um, and these things aren't something that a degree can replace. I mean, maybe writing a thesis or a doctorate might show the same commitment, but in terms of doing a degree, don't expect it to compensate for this. So do focus on still applying yourself with experience. And if you're out of work right now, yes, definitely focus on self-learning, but do pursue um, what you want to do in future, which is to have a job. Um, still focus on this. Don't just say, I'm gonna go study for two years and I'm gonna ignore my career. Um, always focus on that next step in your career, not only the next step in your learning as well, because time is merciless. Um, but otherwise, I hope this has helped. Um, and I guess this might have given you maybe the answer you were looking for, or maybe it's given you an answer you don't like. Or maybe it's given you one you sort of like. Uh, but whatever it, uh, it does for you, I guess I wish you success which, with whatever decision you do choose to make. And I'm more than happy to discuss this further if I guess there's any clarification that you need, because I probably will send this video to a lot of people just as an answer when I'm busy. Um, and I look forward to seeing what other people think of this topic as well and what they've made of my take of it. Um, so I make videos usually once two times a week and hope to do so for a while. Um, I was on break, but I'm back now. So um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care, bye.